Hey guys, welcome. Um, hopefully you guys saw my message this evening and the announcements. Um, after kind of going through, I was back and forth about what I wanted to do this week. Um, did I want to continue to push forward um, and do our synthesis this week? Or um, should we park a little bit, discuss a couple things a little bit deeper? In order for you guys to feel a little bit more confident in your abilities, I just felt like there wasn't a lot of confidence coming out of this last week. And so uh, I did change up our reading a little bit. Uh, this week we're going to be doing chapter 5, chapter 17, and chapter 46. 46 you already had listed as a reading assignment this week, um, but I wanted to really fill that out. So tonight I'm actually going to talk about, or in this particular video rather, I'm going to talk about chapter 5 and chapter 46, uh, which is really finding sources, credible sources, how do we view it, how do we go about it. Um, it can be very overwhelming. You guys, uh, for the first time, went on the online library uh, to all those databases to find an article last week. And so you were able to see that that could be a little overwhelming, especially, you know, depending on what you put in the search engine. At first, you could have come up with like 200 and some thousand articles. And obviously, that's just overwhelming. So it's also about... Um, Really, how do we go about it? How do we break, you know, how do we narrow down those search engines? Uh, if you didn't have an opportunity to last week, please look at uh, the uh, PowerPoint that I made on how to use and access the online uh, library. If you did not have an opportunity to do that, I go through it step by step. I have pictures, you know, click here, that kind of thing, and I walk you through it step by step. So please make sure that you do that um, because that. The online library and those databases are going to be instrumental to every research project for any classes, even your major. Uh, when you're having to write papers, it is going to be instrumental that um, you understand and are confident with how to really uh, maneuver um, through, through that database uh, because it is just awesome and it is credible that the information in there is credible because it's peer reviewed and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. So the whole thing with research is one giving direction. So this week uh, we're still going to stay with the same topic of coronavirus COVID-19 and you will end up writing a synthesis but I'm going to move that back a week so this week you're going to be doing an annotated bibliography for me and I'm going to make a separate video on um, how to do that. Um, before I do any research project I'm going to tell you right now I brainstorm questions about it there are a lot of questions regarding COVID and the coronavirus you know where did it come from was it purposeful was it by accident uh, is it as bad as they say um, there are just opinions galore about everything um, and everyone has an opinion and it's okay uh, what we're trying to determine right now is what is it that you believe, you know, based on the research that you do? There's a lot of rhetoric. We've talked about this all semester. Everybody has something to say. A lot of it is opinion based. And especially in academia, um, opinion doesn't get you very far. Facts are really is what wins the day. And do you have the data? Do you have the evidence to support any claim that you are saying? And so this is such an instrumental skill, not just in academia, but in the real world. Uh, and that's the part of the credibility. You know, we all know those people that just love to talk and, you know, they've got an opinion about everything. And they can say it in a manner that is just like, oh, well, they must know what they talk, they're talking about. But then if you really start digging deeper, does that person really have the facts to back it up? And, and it's okay for you to say, where did you get that information? May I ask where you, you got that? In a nice way, in a conversational way, because again, academia is about, and especially with academic, uh, academic writing, it's about continuing the academic conversation. And in order for us to do that, um, it's okay to politely ask, can you share with me where you got that information and the data that you're looking at or, or whatever it is? And that's in, just really on a myriad of topics to be honest. Okay. So as we're getting into this, um, again, I just kind of wanted to park and kind of marinate on this a little bit. This week's discussion board is, uh, the same as of what I've already, um, had created and is in your module. You're going to be discussing this process of finding these sources. You need to find these sources before your discussion boards are due. Okay. Um, 
one, it's to have that conversation with your classmates. Um, a lot of times people can give some insight. This is what they did and it becomes helpful. And this is a part of that classroom engagement um, and conversation that is just so vital in these in these type of formats, in these online formats. So, all right, so let's jump on in. So chapter five, what I hope that you're doing is that you have your textbook open while I'm going through this. Um, either, you know, you're notating in your text or you have something to write notes on um, because I'm going to be going through. Um, if I'm covering it, you're probably going to see it again. That would be my helpful hint for you. Okay. All right. So, uh, and there's just a couple things that I've highlighted in the reading that I just thought were interesting and just kind of really uh, reinforce some of the things that we've already been talking about. Uh, a lot of this stuff, guys, you, you already know, you've heard, um, hopefully, uh, you know, this is not new. Many of you probably wrote a research paper in high school. So it just gives you a little bit different perspective and the papers are more involved now. But the cool thing is, is that you actually have access to amazing resources that you probably didn't have in high school. So that's why research becomes way cooler in um, college. So woo -woo. all right. So um, one of the things that starts off with is, um, you know, how you're going to, you're going to be writing in college. Again, like I've told you guys, uh, that's one of the best ways that we as professors understand if you really understand a content or, or a concept, uh, something that we're teaching, uh, how much time that you're spending with the subject is if you can write about it and respond to it, then that tells me that you really engaged with what it is that I needed you to, uh, to pull something from and so um, and that's where research comes in because it even says writing off the top of your head or drawing only upon common knowledge won't be viable options um, I'm not sure why they use the word won't I hate that word um, but you know they have it their book they can write it how, however they choose all right so how do we go about this number one you're gathering information from reputable and appropriate sources Wikipedia is not it. Ask.com is not it. Your friendly blog person is not it. So how do we go about how, what really determines, um, if it's credible or not. And right now we're gathering materials. Um, 46 kind of gets in a, a little bit uh, deeper with that. Um, by using credible sources that gives you credibility in what you, how you are responding. It really goes hand in hand. Two, use the research tools your school provides. Oh, the online databases. You have access to hundreds of thousands of resources. And that's per topic. Um, regardless of what your major is, regardless of what the topic is, you have so many things at your fingertips. And last week, I think, you know, it was a good kind of get your feet wet with that. This week, you have to have three articles. And they all have to bring something different to the table. And so, um, again, we're going to go into that a little bit deeper in 46. Um, so this is just kind of like, you know, that first step. But um, you have so many things that are available to you. Your librarians, again, are one of the best resources that you will ever have throughout your college career. Um, they know the library better than anyone. They love what they do. They love helping people through the process and they can get their hands on things a lot quicker than sometimes we can. Okay. Cause they just, they know where to go. They're phenomenal people. Love them. Always get to know your librarians. Um, take advantage of any research tools available to you as a registered student, online databases, articles, study guides, your librarians. Okay. Look for diverse sources representing a respected range of opinion. Again, different perspectives, coronavirus. You have people that are, um, that don't believe that it really exists, that it is, you know, a political, you know, ploy, what have you. Um, some, you know, in my particular family, in my personal opinion, it is very real. My father-in-law just passed away from COVID in June. So depending upon whom you're who you're talking to, it can be, you know, depending on their experiences, depending on their circle, it really depends. So, um, but again, you know, is it blown out of proportion? Is it, is it as bad as everyone says? Is it, uh, really just another strain of flu, you know, that argument that more people die from influenza than they have from COVID. So, I mean, like I said, there's just 
different pieces um, all around um, and different perspectives. Again, doesn't mean that everyone's wrong. Sometimes it could be, you know, I can align a little bit with this. You know, sometimes you can take pieces and parts and that's okay. But again, the main thing is that you're researching it and based on credible sources um, that you're going to, you know, are you going to the World Health Organization? Who are you going to the government websites? Are you going to people who've done testing? You know, and the, and the first handers, you know, we were talking about primary and secondary sources. Primary sources are your best, really, uh, resource, especially in research. So, but the main thing is, is that it has to have different perspectives. That's with any research project, any topic. If all of your sources say the same thing, you're not going anywhere. What are you going to write about? Nothing. Um, you know, on the technical piece or the mechanical piece of it, you're never going to make page count because you have nothing to say. What's there to research if everything, if, if everyone is saying the same thing? You want all of your sources to have a different perspective and I affectionately call it everything, you know, each source has to bring something different to the table. And that's important. So make sure, uh, I think some students have a bad habit of, oh, I got to have these sources because they're due, da, 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 da. And they'll just go find, you know, look up, you know, in this case, COVID. And they find the first three and they put them down without even looking at them. Before you make decisions on a source, please read through them. Read your abstracts. See what the, the studies are about. Um, again, we're going to get into this a little bit more um, in 46, but there's specific things to do on that, okay? Um, let me see. Pay attention to dates. This is an important one. Um, you want the most updated information. Now, granted, COVID has really only been around or that we know of, depending on who you talk to. It could have been, you know, in November, December of last year. March is when it really unfolded for the world. Um, but taking it a step farther... Um, medical, science, remember that it's constantly evolving. There's constant research being done. Even in the medical field, things, you know, you're constantly getting updated. People are finding out new things. Um, you know, would you want to go to a doctor that graduated in the 80s and never went to continuing education? And they were using the same medical uh, information from the 80s rather than the 21st century same thing with teachers you know that's constantly evolving every profession constantly involves the only you know profession that I could see would be history because history is history you know you just have a wealth of stuff to look from but if you are in technology medicine science any of those that are constantly evolving, there's always something new that's coming along. Um, psychology, any ideologies, um, you know, you want the most up to date, which means you're looking at copyright dates. Uh, when, when was it published? A lot of articles, it'll have the date that it was written. So you want to look at those things and make sure that it's relevant uh, because if it's too old, it could be already discounted. Um, so just be really careful with that. Uh, use an adequate number of sources. I've given you, I, you know, I'm using a base of three because I'm kind of scaffolding you guys into using multiple uh, sources later on. Um, but when you get into your larger research projects, for one, every professor will always have a baseline of how many sources that you have to have. So like if I was going to give you a 10 page paper, if you have six like solid resources, uh, you could you could have a 10 page paper. But I always say the minimum is X amount of sources. You can always have more than more than the minimum. The more that you have, again, can you see how that would bring some credibility into it? Uh, but again, you that's a part of the instructions. And I will tell you, I know in my own personal experience from undergraduate and graduate that uh, a lot of my professors, they even broke it down. Like if I needed six sources, they wanted two print, two internet, and two peer-reviewed you know it could be three internet and three print again if it's internet you need to make sure that it's um, credible so that that's your baseline but you can always use more in fact the more that you use um, it really kind of solidifies those opinions that you're making and, and those claims that you're making 
So um, that's always a good thing. Uh, be sure to collect and document your sources systematically. And this is really uh, both, you know, either adding or taking away. Through the research process, which is super fun, by the way, um, when you're finding sources, and at least your initial ones, and you're reading them, and you're finding additional, sometimes through the process you find a better source that actually could go deeper into whatever the topic is that you're doing, uh, where you end up really wanting to use that one instead of another one. Make sure that you keep your bibliography or those sources straight. If you have a bibliography on your Works Cited page, I'm looking for it in your paper. I'm looking for an in-text citation. I match those up. Um, and if I see a site, and it never fails, I'll see a citation and there's no bibliography. Or I'll see the bibliography and it's not cited within the paper at all. Uh, you want to make sure that you keep that list up to date. If you're adding to it, make sure that that gets into your Works Cited page. Again, it's fine. It's fine. But your stuff, that's your checks and balances. Whatever is on that Works Cited page is, I better see an in-text citation, vice versa. And this um, synthesis that you guys are going to be writing for me next week, uh, you're going to have to have in-text citations because you've got at least three sources. And so I need to see that. I don't see in-text citations, that's considered plagiarism, and you get a zero. This is really where um, all those plagiarism talks and everybody's scaring the mess out of you about it, but this is really where it comes down to it. So you you have to, if you have uh, sources on your work cited, you need to have those in-text citations in there, okay? So that's chapter five. Um, you know, again, it's only like a couple pages, so it's not it's not a difficult read at all. It again, it's just kind of um, getting your feet wet and, and getting your mindset into that. Evaluating sources. So now, once you have the sources, evaluating chapter forty six actually goes a little bit deeper into that. But what I want to bring to your attention that I did not put on your reading list was chapter forty five, and that is finding print and online sources. Um, I would go ahead and read through that if you, if that's a question for you, and that's chapter 45, it's on page 436. Um, I would go ahead and do that if that's still an area for you. Um, I didn't really want to quiz you on that, um, again, because everyone has had different experiences with it. Uh, the main thing is the credibility of those sources. Okay, so, but if um, if you're needing some assistance in that area, I would, I would peruse through chapter 45. Okay, so 46, evaluating sources, no matter how prestigious, have strengths and weaknesses, biases and limitations. Um, oh, all sources, I'm sorry, I didn't highlight the whole thing. All sources, no matter how prestigious, have strengths and weaknesses, biases and limitations. And these days you might encounter sources online that have no credibility at all. Uh, so evaluating all sources, um, it is a necessary part of research. You have to make sure that uh, your sources are going to work for you. Uh, students that have had really a hard time with research is they didn't take the time on their groundwork. This is what I call grunt work. I've talked about this before. If your foundation is strong, if you've taken the time to find good sources that have um, a lot of information that's differing from your other sources. Um, you're going to have more than you need. It's easier to pare down than it is to stretch out. Okay, so that's why this is so key. If you don't have this piece of it, it makes the paper very difficult to write. So spend some time. That's why I'm spending this week with you guys on really getting into the sources and finding them. Please make sure that you are doing this before class. On Wednesday and Thursday um, so we can so I can field questions that you have um, and we can and really process through that if you come to class and you haven't even read the chapters or um, started really this process it you know class is not going to be as meaningful to you as it could be okay so uh, preview source material for their key features and um, strategies so we'd already talked about abstracts. When you're doing peer-reviewed articles and you're using those um, research databases on your online library, those articles have abstracts. And basically, it's a summary of the paper. Read those. If your eyes are rolling in the back of your head, 
find something else. There's tons of things to choose from. You want something that's going to engage you. Okay. Um, introductions. If you're using print sources, that's always a good thing. Looking at the table of contents, what kind of information is in there. The index at the back of books, um, you know, what's listed there. And this is really for any type of research, not just this week. Uh, those are great things that you can go directly to so you're not just thumbing through papers. Um, the index for me is way more specific, and I use that probably more than a table of contents, uh, just because... Um, the table of contents is a little bit more general where if you go to the index I can look up specific keywords in an index and I can go directly to the page that it's on so um, that's definitely a resource um, for you to for you to look at um, you want key terms that you're looking for that's on the index look over the bibliography the list of sources indicates how thorough the author has been you know, if they got pages and pages, then they've been doing their research and they've been doing their due diligence. Um, and that says a lot. Um, also, it could be a great place if you're looking at their bibliographies to see uh, where they did get their research. And you could actually go to those sources yourself and read them for yourself and utilize them, perhaps. Do not um, cite what if they're doing a direct quote. Oh, if you're going to be using that resource, like if you see it on their Biblia or their works cited page, um, and you're like, you know, I'd really like to read that, then that's fine if you're actually going to read their material and pull use that as a source. But don't do it as like a third hand where you've um, where you're kind of like paraphrasing a paraphrase. It's almost like making a summary off of a summary. Don't ever do that. Uh, check who published or produced the sur the sources. Um, in general, books published by presses associated with colleges and universities, that's a good thing. Um, and they're reputable. Peer-reviewed articles, we've already talked about that. And they're considered print sources, by the way. Uh, if the original format, like if you see page numbers, if you see that the original format was in a print source, it's considered print, even if it has been scanned and put into a PDF. Um, printing office, I mean, U.S. government printing office makes, uh, make their ample share of mistakes, of course, but we are generally, cons mm, I cannot read tonight, but are generally considered to be far more reliable than websites, blogs, or social media. So let me just answer that for you right now. Uh, you can't use a blog and you can't use social media. Okay. Uh, you need, you need credibility. Now, what makes a person credible? If they've got the alphabet soup behind their name, that's probably a good thing because they've been doing research. If they're PhDs, um, you know, or they've been in the field for a long time, um, they've been doing research, that gives credibility. Okay, so, but blogs and uh, social media, that's a lot of opinion blowing. Uh, check who wrote the work. You should cite, recognize, um, Recognize authorities on your topic. Uh, that's more, I think, for down the road, uh, you know, especially when you start researching a lot. You see, because some people will write multiple articles or books on something, and you know their work from using them in the past uh, and using them for references on additional things or different perspectives or different topics. Uh, consider the audience of the source. Who are they writing for? For academic projects, rely primarily on those scholarly works themselves, even if you are inspired to choose a subject by reading respectable nonfiction. Be sure to recognize when political or cultural pieces are directed to an audience who already agree with the writer's positions or ideas. That's one-sided. You really want well-rounded information. Uh, going on 444, page 444, establish current, how current the source is. We've already talked about that. Uh, check the source's documentation. Um, is it solid based? Again, you're looking at their works cited page, uh, looking at if they're doing research. Um, they always have, um, you know, the, um, the people that they have. Uh, viewed or like if they're interviewing you know what's their base on that how did they go about the research how many people were involved um, especially like with political things you know if they're interviewing people on you know let's say the president 
okay, well, if I just go to a primarily Democratic place and everybody's voting Democrat, obviously that's going to, you know, tilt the world to, okay, I mean, this Democratic person is going to win and vice versa with Republican. If you just go to a Republican area and it's just going to be heavily weighted. If I'm looking at their test base and I see that they have, it's even as far as the, the demographics of who they're testing and it's pretty even, you get a better gauge out of how, how people are voting. Um, and, and also different test sites, not just one area, multiple areas. Uh, so that's important. Um, we've talked about, you know, the sources that they're using. No serious claim should be left hanging. Don't leave your reader hanging. It always should have that support. If they're going to make a claim, they have to support it. I always think about those articles that they catch you. And I'm going to use social media for a second. Um, and you're like, oh, this looks like such a great article. I can't wait to read it. And then it's like has nothing to do with the title. That, that amazes me that that even got published. But, um, you know, if you're going to make a claim, then where's the evidence for it? Talk about, you know, they should be talking about what it is that they um, say they're going to be talking about. Um, avoid the echo chamber and fake news. Hello, we are in that period in our history. Uh, ex exercise extreme caution with web sources, social media, and indeed all news sources these days as sources for academic papers. Always be sure you know who is responsible for the material you are reading. Um, and you'll know that, like, who's paying the bills? And we just have that. You know who's liberal. You know who's conservative. Um, sometimes it's a little diff difficult to, okay, who's actually reporting the news and who's actually reporting the facts. And that's why we, we talked a little bit earlier, um, and we talked about last week, .gov, uh, if you're looking for candidates and they're saying, you know, this is – this is what I'll do, but you look at their voting record and it was the opposite of anything that they said that they've done. You can trust that because that's their voting record, because that is, um, that's that knowledge, um, and that open knowledge that is public record. Um, again, making sure that they're not outdated on page 445. There's an evaluation checklist. You want to know that. Um, Yeah, and that, my darlings, is it. Now, on page 446, this is kind of, this is actually an example of a source, um, and it kind of breaks down like those peer-reviewed articles where it has the abstract and the things to look for, um, and I would definitely look through that. Again, take some time this week. Take some time. Do some research. Uh, and take these things into account. Um, I will tell you right now, um, I can see both sides of pretty much every argument and I will argue always the opposite of what the student is. If you're liberal, I'm going to argue Republican. If you are for the death penalty, I'm going to argue against it. If you are Republican, I'm going to argue liberal because I can do that. Um, because I want to test why you know that, why you support that, why are you in agreement with that? I will always play the opposite end and I'm going to start asking questions. And so if you have that kind of in the back of your head that someone is always going to be questioning you, um, one that's my job is I don't take sides, um, but I'll always go to the opposite one because I want to make sure that you know why you're arguing that way. Did you do your due diligence? Um, I don't know everything, but I know just enough to make me dangerous. And I'll tell you, um, I can research quickly to find information because uh, I enjoy it because I'm a nerd. So um, just kind of keep that. If someone were to question you on that, could you really give them an answer? And if you have that in the back of your mind as you're doing your research and keep that as far as, okay, I need to be able to substantiate whatever this is then you'll be in a good place. But take some time. This is your grunt work. This will make or break what you're doing next week. So take some time with it. We're going to talk about it in class this week. So if you have any questions, please let me know. But really, in order for me to, anything that I say uh, and any questions that you have, if you haven't started this process, 
it's not going to magically change you. So please start that process that way. Uh, even if you're not finding anything, tell me what you're doing and then let me help w walk alongside you to uh, see what I can do to help you. But you have you have to do your part in order for my part to make sense. You see what I'm saying? So um, you guys have a great evening and I will see you in class this week. And get working. This is going to be fun. And uh, just look at it as an adventure. And that's what research is. You never know where it's going to take you. And you never know what you're going to find out. Because there's always something cool that we always find out through the process of research. So I'm excited for you. I hope you're getting excited. And I'll see you guys in class.